Hey guys, in this video, we turn this burl wood into a translucent epoxy table. By sanding the bottom of the table, we got a perfect frosted effect. We started with box elder burl, we cut it in half, and we used our slab jig to get it nice and flat. In this video, we're gonna show you the simple steps of creating a successful project using epoxy and wood. Learn all the steps right now from building a form to prepping your project right. We'll demonstrate right now how to hold your project down during the pour. We're also going to show you how to add little bits of metallic powder so you get the perfect translucent effects. In this video, we pour a large mass of casting epoxy and we finish it by swirling around the faint metallics to give us the desired looks. Whether you're a beginning woodworker or a seasoned professional, we hope the tips and tricks found in this video will trigger creative genius. We trim and router and prep the edges for our final pour. We're gonna show you exactly how we apply our seal coats and how it brings this wood project to life. Learn how to finish your project smart by filling final pinholes before your last coat. Learn why woodworkers love stone coat countertop epoxy. We were thrilled with the final results of this project. We loved how the light could shine right through. The clarity was amazing. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. A good friend of mine, Brandon, brought this box elder to my shop so we could create a project for his wife. So we'll take this, set this level wherever it is you want to make this cut. Yep. Right here? You got it, man. After we cut the piece of wood in half with our skill saw, we use an angle grinder to remove the saw marks. So we're going to do some sort of a live edge. Do you, do you, is it okay if I do that? Yeah. Okay, I'll just bust it in there, man. We use that 50 grit metal sanding disc to also take this straight edge and make it more organic so it resembles a live edge. I'll do a full live edge now, dude. That's <laughs> beauty. Brandon, we made our own live edge. Do you like it? I love it. All right, let's get this thing uh, built, man. Here we go. Done. We decide which sides will be top and bottom, and then we're going to use our slab jig to make sure we have a nice flat bottom so we can build our form and we won't waste casting epoxy underneath an uneven bottom side. A surface planing router bit makes short work of the uneven wood. It had a slight crown in the wood, but we're only going to address the bottom side because we know after we fill it with casting epoxy, we'll come back and make sure the top is just as flat. The design of our router jig is ideal for this setup. We kept everything nice and rigid by toenailing screws in and keeping our project steady while going across it with our router jig. We make a decision on the final dimensions of the table and we trim each piece so that they're at the right size. One down. This one doesn't need a lot off. Woodworking with epoxy is simple when you break it down into steps. We're going to use three quarter inch melamine as our base and we're also gonna rip strips of melamine for our sides so that we have a form that's slightly taller than our finished project height. We like using a Craig pocket jig to pre-drill our side rails so that we get a very nice snug fit. We'll set this one in place and we'll square it and then we'll run our two side rails equal and then jam that to it, okay? So if we're gonna keep a little gap there Yes, pretty are you filming it? Oh yeah, what's our rule? Film it all. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Got me something before. Yep. <laughs> That's good. 
So we traced our lines in so we knew how our river went back in just in case we forgot. Okay, let's silicone these joints so it becomes a watertight form. It's insurance. Silicone's a lot less expensive than a gallon and a half of epoxy. The first thing you do. <laughs> Applying Tyvek tape to the outside of our form is simply insurance just in case there might be a small hole or a leak for the casting epoxy. This ensures that we don't waste any. We're cutting the excess melamine away from our form to keep the weight down. I love that edge, man. That is such an amazing piece of wood. I'm very thankful to own it. It's good practice to remove excess dust from your live edges before applying your seal coats. Okay, let's move this in, dry that silicone, and we're ready to apply the seal coats on the edges of our slab table. Let's do this right now. Question of the day, are you guys having fun? Do you like this type of project? Let us know in the comments below. What do you want to see done next from StoneCoatCountertops.com? In the next step, we're going to seal the edges of our live edge by mixing up a one-to-one -one ratio of our fast setting epoxy, our quick coat. This will dry quickly. We can apply it with a brush and this will seal the edges so that air doesn't leak out into our casting epoxy. Really get a liberal coat on these edges. It's good to apply multiple seal coats to the edges. This stops the air from leaking into your casting epoxy. You want to work quickly with our quick coat because it's our fast setting epoxy. You have about 15 minutes to work with it. All right, we got the seal coats on. We're going to let this dry. Let's and we're go. ready for live at five. Mitch, what do you think of this thing, man? This is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see what color you decide to put in there, man. What color are you going to do, Brent? Brandon, this is for your I wife's don't know. present. That's right. You're, you're you in the doghouse or you just that nice? No, no, no. This no doghouse. <laughs> I've been trying for 20 years to surprise my wife, but she's too clever. She's good. I'm and nice. apparently I'm not clever enough. This could be the first big surprise in 20 years. Yes. I was able to pull a fast one. What, what color are we going to do, man? I don't know. I'm, I'm game for All whatever. right. We'll go check out the metallic options. We're going to cut three quarter inch square tubing to hold our project down during the epoxy pour. Guys, we did a really fun live. We're going to show you how we took this live edge slab table. We kept it iridescent. Is this color not amazing? Totally amazing. All right, Do you see which way it goes? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Luke, you got to get a close-up of this burl. How beautiful. I mean, it's just such a unique... A unique piece. Took months to find the, the exact right one. So we wouldn't want to cover that with an opaque mix, right? We, so we really want to um, showcase it. Because we're pouring deep, we're using our super cast, which is designed to be poured nice and thick. And you want to go tropical turquoise, we're going to just make it very translucent. Um, we have a very scientific way to measure that, and that's with a plastic spoon. Gonna start very little because we can always add more, right? So I'm gonna start there. It's splashing, man. We're You're fireworks. It. Oh, I just got I just got epoxy got on my lip. <laughs> oh, it's showing up too. Let's go ahead and pour that in. Go nice and slow with it, kind of let it work its way, and then we'll torch it as as needed. I like oh, that color. Lad. Look at that color, brother. <sighs> Okay guys, this is where you find out how well you did on your form. <laughs> As we pour our supercast casting epoxy, we torch every quarter inch. This allows the air to release and then we continue our pour until we fill our project to the top. If you want to watch the entirety of this process, we did film this portion live. We go live in front of YouTube every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Watch the arrow right here. This will lead you to the full episode. So you know what we did today, Mitch, is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is uh, we tested our customer service and we measured length, width, depth. Yeah. I called and pretended I was somebody else from Brandon's phone and Patrick answered awesome. and, and I was like, can you tell me how much to use? And he did amazing. I was testing them. Did they not pass with flying colors? Man? After he after he aced the test, he said, "Also, Mike, I know that too." Yeah, <laughs> like, he knew what I knew. but I even tried to change my voice, and you know, I'm, I can't change my voice. <laughs> he 
know he knows you the whole time. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> like he did this really funny. He, he's like, <laughs> and then and like then he's like, wait, is this really him? Like you could tell he was second guessing it. It was awesome. <laughs> so Patrick, if you're watching, man, you got this. How how much do you love seeing the pins and the detail of that burl? How it's like you're in my mind. Seriously, I will never charge you rent, dude. It's just I love that you're in there. But that's exactly what I was thinking about. What we do too is we're going to overfill this, and then this material will shrink slightly. And when it shrinks, that's okay. We're going to get everything sanded flush, and then we're going to do our normal stone coat countertop epoxy. By swirling the casting epoxy, it makes the metallics create a fun design. Okay, guys. The next morning, I came into the shop. Our our casting resin is dry where it's a big mass, but over here where the river gets smaller, it's not so dry. It's still really sticky. Um, it has shrunk a little bit. It's going to get below the surface because the supercast will shrink. And I'm going to use our original casting epoxy to fill up this last, oh, eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to fill in some of these voids here um, where it's a little bit shrunk and that kind of thing. And we'll get this thing all filled up because I know that our original casting epoxy is gonna dry much faster than our supercast will in small increments. Let's get started. Because the top surface of this wood project wasn't planed yet, we haven't used our router jig on it. It's bowed, so we do have a high point on one end, but we're gonna fill the remainder of this project with our original casting epoxy because it's designed to be poured three quarters of an inch or less. After our casting epoxy has set up, it's time to take our project out of the mold. Any piece or part of our form that comes in contact with the epoxy needs to be wrapped in Tyvek tape. This will make sure it releases cleanly and with ease. During our live video, we tested wax as a release agent to allow us to pull our project out of our form. We show the results of this test and it didn't work out too well. To see those results, watch the very end of this video. We're sanding the bottom side of our project to prepare for the next step. I wipe off the dust to get a glimpse of how that frosted look is going to appear. Next, we're going to use our slab jig to make sure the top of our project is just as flat as the bottom. We're using those Craig screws to hold our project in place. We'll get our mask and our ear protection on. We're using gloves so that any of the chips don't hurt our hands and we're going to get this project flat. I'm going to use a fine tooth wood cutting saw blade on my skill saw. I'm going to use my straight edge to make sure I get nice square edges around the perimeter of my table. Directly out of the mold, the edges where the epoxy is are just slightly imperfect. So we're going to make them perfect by cutting them nice and square. By adjusting the depth of my saw blade, I'll make multiple passes to ensure I get a nice clean cut. Next, we're going to use our angle grinder fitted with a flush 50 grit metal sanding disc and we're going to remove our saw marks on our edges as well as the router marks on the surface of our project. Let's prep the surface for epoxy by using our random orbital sander starting at 60 grit and working all the way up to 220 grit. This is going to give us a smooth finish perfect to accept epoxy. On the bottom side of our project, we're going to use a 1 8 inch round over router bit to prep the edge. We'll flip the project over and we'll use a 1 quarter inch round over bit on the top side. We really like the way this looks on all of our epoxy projects, especially tables like this.
Again, we'll finish the edges and the top side of our surface with 220 grit and we're ready for the next step. Next, we're gonna mix up our epoxy for our first of three seal coats. We're using our normal stone coat countertop epoxy. We'll mix it with the drill for two minutes and we'll mix it at a one to one ratio. We only need one ounce per square foot. We need to stop air from getting into our flood coat. That's why we apply three seal coats. It's simple, use a shower squeegee, spread it along the surface and use your gloved hand to apply it to your edges. Wow, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at that, <laughs> oh I love the color of this wood, look at, look at what it's doing, look at that river, I like that the river's frosty underneath, oh goodness, this is just gorgeous. Use a torch to remove any air left in that seal coat and remember your seal coats will never be free of imperfections. We're simply preparing our surface for that final flood coat. After the first seal coat is done, we're gonna use 220 grit to sand the surface and the edges of our project. Then we're gonna wipe the dust and we're ready to repeat the second seal coat in the same form and fashion. Stubborn areas or pinholes left after seal coats are common. We have a couple of little pinholes that we're gonna fill and we're gonna show you how we do that right now. We're gonna sand the surface with 220 grit and we're gonna use Mohawk burn-in sticks. These are designed as a furniture repair system, but in this case, we're gonna use it to fill the pinhole and blend it with the color. Right now, I'm searching for the perfect color and I've found it. By simply heating it up with our torch and using it like a coloring crayon, we'll fill that pinhole. I'll do it on this area, but I want it a little bit darker so it blends in with the surrounding wood tones. This is a fast step. Immediately after I've applied the burn-in stick, I can use a straight edge razor blade. This straight edge razor blade will act as a scraper. I'm gonna scrape the excess right off the surface after I reheat it. Okay, because we have already done a seal coat today, it's been about eight hours ago and we're still tacky. I didn't need to sand because we're still tacky. If you don't have any experience working with epoxy, let it cure, sand it, and do your next seal coat. But if you know what you're doing and you know the right time to hit it when it's still tacky, that's a good thing to do and you could get multiple seal coats done in the same day.
There's the third seal coat. We'll let that set up. We'll do the final flood coat. I can't wait to see the results of that final coat. This project is coming out fantastic. For our final flood coat, we're going to use three ounces per square foot. We'll mix this with a drill for two minutes. Then we'll use our one eighth by one eighth square notch trowel to spread the correct amount of material over the surface. Next, we're going to use our chop brush to remove any of our trowel marks and we'll also brush those edges out with long horizontal strokes so they get nice and smooth. We're going to torch the surface three times to remove any air and look at how clear our project gets. Brandon is going to weld a steel base and really support each piece of wood so we didn't need to embed steel bars like we normally do on our river table projects. Once again, we're going to use our 50 grit metal sanding disc to remove the drips from the bottom side of our table. Then we're going to use our random orbital sander to sand up to 220 grit so the bottom side of our project gets frosted and it looks even and it looks really professional. Brandon and I, as well as my son, had a great time building this project. We invite you to visit StoneCoatCountertops.com to see all the products used in this video. Thanks, Brandon. This thing came out awesome. What do you think, man? This is one sick table. Beautiful burl, man. This stone coat is what brought it out. The minute it went on was like adding a 10,000 grit polish. What do you think, Will? It's amazing. I love it. I wish, I kind of wish it was mine, but. <laughs> We're going to take this in the other room, show you guys what this really looks like with some light coming through it. Let's do it right now. You got this. Did I scare you, Brandon? No, <laughs> no. that scared me. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Hey, visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon. Let me show you what happened the last time I went over melamine just testing melamine by itself. Are you interested in that? Let's find out right now. So right here, this is a form that we built and the epoxy held on so tight to the melamine, it pulled giant chunks off. So that's why we applied wax to test this and see if it works better than raw melamine. And I think it's gonna be a home run. Let's find out right now. Okay, by hand, it's not moving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the melamine here so I got a spot to start lifting this without causing damage from my clamp. Ready? Okay, I felt it. Look at that, yes. Look at that, look at how transparent that is. Come on top. Hello. Boy, that's sticking pretty hard, dude. It may not have been, <laughs> may not have been a good idea. You hold that board down, like right here, hold it. 
Luke is filming and helping at the same time, man. Good job, Luke. Oh, I'm gonna go hard. I, I'd hold right here. Oh yeah, it's gonna come. Okay, let me just work it with this down the edge. There we go, that's good. There we go. Woo! It's a workout, dude. Nice, there it went. The answer to our experiment was clear. Don't use furniture wax as a release. It didn't work out well. We had to chisel and grind the chunks of melamine off the bottom side of our project. That's okay. We got it off. We sanded it flush and our project turned out just fine. We're going to be using different sprays and releases to find the perfect one. But until then, we'll use Tyvek tape as a great release knowing that our project will pop off with ease every time.